In the previous video, we looked at a scenario where we had an encastre beam, and that encastre beam was being subjected to a point load of 850 newtons at a distance of 3.5 meters from the left hand support. Now what we found in that video was that the maximum bending moment acting on the beam was 1012.3 newton meters. But what we're going to look at in this video is how we determine the position of point load P that leads to the maximum bending moment. And that maximum bending moment is still going to occur at the left hand support, but we're going to find that it's actually larger than 1012.3 newton meters. Now we're going to use Excel to do this. So first of all, I've already transferred some information across to my spreadsheet. I have the value of the point load of 850 newtons. I have the length of the beam as 8.4 meters. And what we're going to find is the combination of A and B that give us the maximum bending moment. I've also got our formulas from the equation sheet. We've got the formula for the bending moment at the left hand support. We've got the formula for the bending moment at the right hand support and the formula for the bending moment at the point of application of the force. So what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to set up a column for the value of A. Now that value of A is going to range, and I want it to range from zero meters all the way up to 8.4 meters. Now I'm going to go up in 0.1 meter increments. So all the way from zero up to 8.4, in 0.1 meter increments. Like so. So as A changes, the value of B is going to change because B is just the length minus A. So when A is small, B is large or close to the length, and when A is large or close to the length, B becomes very small. So B then, as a formula, is just 8.4, or the length, minus the value of A. And I can populate that column alongside A. Okay, so now I need three bending moment calculations. I need a calculation for the bending moment at A. I need a calculation for the bending moment at B. And I also need a calculation for the bending moment at P, or where the point load is being applied. Because what we're looking for is the position that leads to the maximum bending moment. Now we're going to use formulas for this. The bending moment at A, the formula is PB squared A over L squared. So we have equals, open brackets for the top of our fraction, 850, multiplied by B squared. And I'm going to click on the B column, shift six for the power of two, and then I need to multiply that by A. So I'm gonna do shift eight for multiply. I'm going to click on the A column and close my brackets, and then divide by L squared, or well, the length is 8.4. So divide by 8.4 to the power of two. And all I'm going to do is paste that formula down. So the values of A and B are changing, therefore the bending moment is changing. And we can see that occurring there. Let's do exactly the same for MB. So we have equals, open brackets, P is 850, B, we're going to click on the column with B, A squared, so A to the power of 2, divided by L squared or 8.4 squared, 8.4 to the power of 2. And once again, I'm going to paste that down. Okay, I have one final formula. This is for the bending moment at the point load. And we have a formula again, so equals, open brackets, and the formula I'm referring to here is from the formula sheet, 2p a squared b squared over l cubed. So we have equals, 
two times P is 850 times A squared, and I'm going to click on the cell with A to the power two. B squared, I'm going to click on the cell with B to the power two. And then I'm going to divide by L cubed this time. So divide by 8.4 to the power three. I'm going to paste that down. So before we determine our maximum bending moment, let's just check that what we have here correlates that what we had previously. So when we did this using hand calculations, we had a value of A equal to 3.5 meters. And the magnitudes of our bending moments were 1012.3, 723.1, and 843.6 respectively. Let's check that against our Excel calculations. So we have an A value of 3.5. Here, when A equals 3.5, B equals 4.9, the magnitude of the bending moment at the left hand support is 1012.3, the magnitude of the bending moment at the right hand support is 723.1, and at the point of application of the force, it's 843.6, which correlates. So, in that position there, we can see that the maximum bending moment is occurring at the left hand support. For increasing values of A, we can see that the bending moment at the left hand support decreases, whereas for decreasing values of A, we can see that it increases. And in fact, what we're looking for is the maximum bending moment, which is occurring here. When A equals 2.8 and B equals 5.6, we have a maximum bending moment at the left hand support of 1057.8. And we can see that the other two bending moments are smaller. But can we find anything larger than that? Let's look for our right hand support. Well, what we're going to notice is that there is a maximum bending moment for the right hand support. And that maximum bending moment for the right hand support here in the center column is also 1057.8. And here it occurs when A equals 5.6 and B equals 2.8. The point loads essentially at the same position, but on the other end of the beam. It's a mirror image, if you like. So all that's left to check is whether there's a larger bending moment at the application of the force. We can see that the values are increasing as the value of A decreases, but we can see that the maximum actually occurs here. Now this is quite a unique situation because what we notice is that the bending moment of the left hand support equals the bending moment of the right hand support equals the bending moment at the center. And the only time that will occur is when the point load is positioned at the center of the beam. So to summarize, when the point load is at the center of the beam, all three bending moments are the same. As A decreases, the bending moment at A increases up to a peak value when A equals 2.8. And as A continues to decrease, the bending moment at A decreases. Now, if we allow A to increase, we'll notice that the bending moment at the right hand support increases. And once again, we'll notice that there's a maximum bending moment at the right hand support of 1057.8 occurring when A equals 5.6, but this time B equals 2.8. So let's scroll back up to the top. Now in actual fact, the significance of these values of 2.8 and 5.6 is that the maximum bending moment will actually occur at the left hand support when A is equal to the length over three. So A equals 8.4 over 3. In this case that equals 2.8 but obviously it's dependent on the length of the beam. The other important thing that we've noticed here is that the bending moment at the application of the point load will never exceed the bending moment at its closest support. So in this case when A is smaller than L over 2 
the bending moment at the left hand support will always be greater than the bending moment at P. And if A was greater than L over 2, then the bending moment at the right hand support would always be greater than the bending moment at point P.